Welcome to the jungle in another episode of Planet Tacoma World, where you can see our beast is a little under the weather. I'm your host, Sir David Attenborough. Mr. Attenborough was a little tired, so he had to lie down for a nap. I can still hear you. So I'll be your host for the remainder of this episode. Hopefully that's okay with you guys. If this is your first time stopping by the Tacoma Holic channel and you love everything related to Tacomas, go ahead and subscribe now. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we will be going over a quick fix to help you out if you have throttle issues or idle issues from your throttle position sensor that you are experiencing immediately after having your battery disconnected for any length of time. As you know, doing a ton of stuff under the hood, it is always safer to disconnect your battery while you're working on stuff because if the battery is disconnected, there is zero chance of shorting anything out. I think the last thing I had mine disconnected for, for about 20 or 30 minutes, was when I pulled out and cleaned my mass airflow sensor. This is an expensive part, don't want to risk shorting it out, so I had the battery disconnected. And as you know, when you disconnect the battery, I think usually if it's more than five or 10 minutes, it resets the computer in your truck and several other things, which can sometimes result in idle issues with your engine and your throttle sensor until the computer actually like relearns itself and recalibrates or, you know, whatever you want to call it. So if you are experiencing this throttle issue or idle issue, the computer should fix itself eventually, but if you don't want to wait for that, if you want to get your truck running back to normal as quick as possible, I have a simple solution that will literally take 60 seconds of your time, if that. As a side note, go ahead and comment below. Let me know the last project you're working on for your Tacoma where you did have to disconnect the battery. And before we jump right in, the new black Tacoma Holic hats, just like this one, only black of course, are available in my Teespring store. You can get them in the dad style like this, trucker style and snapback. Link right down below, so please check that out. All right, everybody, here on the inside of the truck. Now, what I'm going to show you today is specific for second-gen Tacomas. It should work for all second-gen Tacomas years 2005 to 2015. It would not surprise me if it also worked for the third gens, given the way Toyota usually has similar process for these type of things, even if the systems are a little different. So you can certainly try it out for that. And if it does work for your third gen, comment below, let me know. So again, after disconnecting your battery for 20, 30 minutes or longer for whatever project you're working on, if the first time you start it, well, first of all, if you've never done this before, the first time you try to start your truck, it'll probably cut off halfway through. Don't panic, that happens all the time. When you have the battery disconnected for any length of time, second time you try to start it, it should fire right up. So after that, if you are noticing when you're just in park, uh, not moving your truck around, if you notice you're idling a little high or if the RPMs are sort of jumping around more than usual, I wanna say my idling and park in my Tacoma, you know, once that initial surge happens and it drops a little bit, I wanna say it's around a thousand RPMs. I could be wrong, uh, but that's where it's usually steady, you know, before I put it into drive and get on the road. So if you notice that's higher than normal or jumping around, I have a quick solution that should help remedy that. Okay, step one, the truck is off. Go ahead and put your key in the ignition and turn it into the on position, which on my second gen is the second selection. Again, don't actually turn your truck on, just put it into the on position. You'll get all the lights on the dash, you know, you'll get the beep, your stereo will start to come on, all that fun stuff. For the next step, with the key remaining in the on position, we are gonna slowly depress the gas pedal and- Continuous recording will now start. My GPS. On your smartphone, connect to a Wi-Fi network whose name starts with Thinkware. GPS connected. For the next step, we are gonna depress the gas pedal slowly, and slowly is the key word here. You don't wanna do it too quick, you don't wanna take forever. It should take you about two to three seconds to push the gas pedal all the way in. Again, the key is in the on position, so we're gonna do this process three times. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the gas pedal all the way down slowly. Hold it there for a count of three, and then let off just as slowly. And again, you're gonna repeat this process, give it a few seconds after you let go, two or three times, so I'm depressing it again slowly, holding it for a few seconds, and then releasing, and one more time with feeling.
After that, go ahead and take the key, turn it into the off position, and pull it out of the ignition, let everything sort of reset back to state zero or ground zero, whatever you want to call it. And at this point, you are going to go ahead and start the truck. Now, I was not having this issue just doing this for tutorial methods, but once you start the truck, you should notice it should start up right away and your RPM should drop to the normal level. And again, my truck's warmed up. I just ran some errands in park and it looks like I am at about eight or 900 RPMs at the normal range. Now, if the first time you try this process of repeating the gas pedal uh, two or three times and you notice once you start your truck, the RPMs dropped a little bit more to that normal RPM range, but not all the way, don't worry. You can start over and redo the process again and again until it actually drops. Sometimes it'll fix it completely on the first try, other times it'll sort of knock it down in increments, so you can repeat it as many times as necessary until you get it back to that normal operating range for the RPMs when your vehicle is not moving in park. Looks like mine already dropped again, so maybe 700 RPMs if you can see that on the camera. Nice and low, right where it needs to be. Okay, everybody, I have seen this issue and people talking about this issue on all kinds of social media where they thought it was something terrible like the transmission or something bigger with the engine when in fact, it just had to be a little recalibrated after having the battery disconnected for a longer period of time. So please go ahead and comment below. Let me know what you thought of this video and if this trick works for you. Hopefully it'll help out a few of you and save you from a larger headache when in fact it was just a quick recalibration that was all that was needed. As always, thanks so much for supporting the channel by watching this video. Enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you in the next video.